In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my top 10 things to know when eating in Japan. Japanese food is pretty awesome as you guys already know from watching some of my previous videos. But in this video, I wanted to share with you guys some Japanese restaurant and Japanese eating tips. If you guys think any of these are weird, disagree or agree, let me know in the comment section. Oh, and if you want to help support my channel, check out my Sushi Girl merch. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. All right, let's do this. So let's talk about sharing food in Japan. So Japan has kind of a weird standard when it comes to sharing food. So it really depends on the situation. In some situations, it's not okay to share, while other situations, it's okay to share, and in some other situations, you're expected to share. Yeah, it's really confusing, right? First, where it's not okay to share. Here are some examples. So ramen shops with limited counter space is generally not okay to share. The reason why it's not okay is one, they have limited space, and two, they usually have a high turnover rate for customers and they want to get customers in and out. And that one seat is really important for them to be able to make money on. So if you take up one of those seats and you don't buy a ramen bowl, that's one seat wasted for them. But this just doesn't only apply to ramen shops. Generally, if a restaurant has a set meal, places that also have limited spaces or whatever, when there's actually a long line and people are trying to get in, especially during lunchtime, then you're probably gonna not want to share. Oh, and even nicer sushi restaurants expect you to order your own meal. On the other hand, where it's okay to share Share your food is places like fast food restaurants, family restaurants, and cafes. So coming from the US, it's generally expected when you go to a restaurant with friends that you go there and you order your own meal. At the end of the meal, you just pay for what you ordered. But in Japan, it's quite the opposite. When you go to a drinking restaurant, also known as an izakaya, and they expect you to share your food. And at the end, everyone just puts a bill or the person with the most money sometimes pay if you're lucky. Now, if you have children, it gets a little bit more tricky. It's okay to eat in the place that I mentioned above but again you have to really consider what the restaurant thinks my friends with kids what they do is they actually call in advance to the restaurant to see if it's okay to share maybe that's gonna be a little bit harder if you don't speak Japanese but that's what Japanese people do so if you don't speak Japanese then you're just gonna have to go into the shop and ask when you arrive basically it's rude to go to a restaurant order food and not finish most of it not finishing sides you get a pass but it's considered extremely rude to not finish the main course Course. There is some gray area here. So for example, if you eat a ramen bowl, take down a lot of it and you're super full, but there's still quite a bit left. It might be considered rude because it's still the appearance of not eating that much food on your plate. But if you're concerned with not being able to finish your meal, you can ask them to reduce the portion size, whether it be reducing the noodles or the rice, and they're happy to do it. It's completely fine. Oh, and one nice thing though, is if you can't finish all your food, this is one time it's okay to share the food, just as long as the person you're with also ordered their own meal. What do you guys think? Japan is too strict? All right, so let's talk about a Western pastime, customizing your meal at a restaurant. Customizing your meal in Japan is not very very common, like requesting a no meat in your dish or to take out all of the onions. In general, Japanese people tend to not request changes to their meal because they think they'll offend the chef. But if you have an allergy, you should definitely tell them. Don't say allergy, they won't understand. Say arerugi, and then what you're allergic to. And the reality of it, it's difficult to do it in Japanese as well. So my Japanese friend who doesn't eat any meat, she always has trouble at restaurants. For example, she'll ask the server whether or not the dish has any meat in it. If it does, she tries to ask if they're willing to take it out. The first problem is the server doesn't really know what's in the menu when it comes to a lot of the ingredients, so they'll have to ask the person who's making the food. People that are making the food are often just regular workers, so they're not able to change the menu up so easily. They just follow one recipe for that particular dish. As you can see, just going back and forth between the server, the cook, and yourself, and just trying to figure out what's in the meal, what they can actually change is a lot of work just in Japanese. So if you're gonna try to do this in English, then you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle. And even though they agree to give my friend what she wants or what she ordered, when the dish comes, it's actually not what she wanted and there's meat inside. So all in all, you can try to customize your meal but more than likely, you're gonna have issues just like my Japanese friend. One caveat, if you go to the really nice restaurants, like for example, a nice sushi restaurant, and when you place your order with a server, 
they will ask you whether or not you have any allergies or if there's anything you can't eat. So maybe another route is just paying a little bit more and going to a restaurant that will accommodate your allergies or your diet. All right, now here's some tips for my vegan fans. Just so you guys know, many Japanese dishes use broth that include meat or fish. Even some veggie dishes use broth that has meat or fish. There are restaurants though that do advertise a vegan menu and those are the ones you should definitely look for. Otherwise, if it's not advertised, then more likely they're gonna have broth with meat or fish. Also, kind of a funny thing, I've gone to restaurants with my vegan friend and he's told them that he's vegan and they actually asked him if fish was okay. <laughs> The thing is, Japanese just don't have a lot of education when it comes to vegetarians. Many are unfamiliar or simply don't understand Western diets. My best suggestion for you is to do your research before going to any restaurants. The information oh, is out there. Yeah. What do you say before a meal? In all of the street videos, people are always asking, what is Maiko saying? She's saying, eat the dakimas, which literally translates into receiving. So basically, Japanese people say this when they're receiving the food for the first time before they eat. The thing is, Japanese people are not saying it for any spiritual reason or they're really thankful that they're receiving the food. They just say it because that's what they've always done, that's what they were taught when they were kids, and it's just the thing to do. So if you want to be more like a local in Japan, then say, eat the dakimas before you eat. All right, let's talk about the unwritten drinking rule in Japan. So when you go to a restaurant, especially at dinner, they actually expect you to order a drink, whether it be alcohol, soda, or even tea. So when you go to a restaurant and you order water, they might be a little bit surprised. Although it's not the worst thing in the world, it's just kind of weird. In fact, when I go to restaurants, sometimes I just order water when I don't feel like drinking. Hold on. The kids all just got ice cream. Actually, that might be a good thing. They're gonna be quiet for a second so we can finish this. All right, let's continue. And now when you guys go to restaurants and you see small water cups and the fact that they don't serve you water very often during your meal, you might know the reason why. So at the end of the day, if you wanna be more local, then do the local thing and order a drink. All right, now let's talk about slurping. This one is probably something you already know, but it's worth the cover anyway. Slurping noodles or soba in Japan is completely okay. In other cultures, it may seem rude, but it's not a problem here in Japan. But unlike what a lot of people believe, it doesn't mean that you're showing the chef that you really like their food. It's just what Japanese do, like Westerners using a steak knife to cut a steak. Let me know in the comment section if that's what you were told, because I'd really like to know. Now let's talk about takeout boxes. Aside from fast food spots, takeout boxes are not very common in Japan. At the end of your meal, don't expect to be able to get a doggy bag to take home your leftovers. Generally in Japan, portions are served relatively small, so there's really never a case where you're gonna order way too much food, unless you just really go overboard, but Japanese people usually don't do that. That's maybe why Japanese have created the word toriaizu. Toriaizu means good for now when ordering in a restaurant. So when the server asks you if you'd like to order anything else, you can always say, I'm good for now by saying toriaizu. All right, so let's talk about this one what you do at the end of your meal. At fast food restaurants, including ramen shops, you're expected to put away your plates and throw away trash when you're done. For trash, sometimes you'll see a very involved process to throw away your items. Liquids go here, plastic goes here, paper goes here, trays go here, plates go here, mugs go here, cups go here, and spoons and forks go here. You can't just throw everything away in one bin. And for ramen shops, it's always good practice to return your bowl at the top counter when you're finished. If the shop has a return area, then it's always nice to return your plate and your trays there. All right, now let's talk about money. Paying at the register. Many restaurants ask you to pay at the register instead of paying at your table when you finish your meal. Don't worry, there's no tips to worry about in this one. But one thing you should know is that there's usually a tray that's right next to the register where you're supposed to put your money or your credit card. Some Japanese don't like to transfer money by hand because they don't like being touched so they prefer you using the tray instead. It's not necessarily rude to do so, but some people just prefer it. I personally handed over cash to cashiers and they've had no problem with it, while at other times I've had cashiers directly point to the tray and ask me to put the money on the tray. At the end of the day, it really depends on the person, but if you want to play it safe, then always put your money or your credit card on the tray. Plus, in Japan, the smallest bills are a thousand yen, so you deal with a lot of coins. 
so it does help to put the coins on the tray to help keep you from fumbling around with a change when you're handing it over to the cashier. All right, so that concludes my top 10. But something to keep in mind, these are generalizations. There's always gonna be exceptions to the rule. Not all restaurants, not all Japanese people are like this. So you just gotta use this kind of as a guide and play it by ear when you're in Japan. So after hearing my top 10, what do you guys think? Is it weird? Is it something that you guys do in your country? Or is it completely the opposite? But if this video did help you out, let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more of my adventures in Tokyo or Japan, hit that subscribe button and that bell button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.